My amp unit, welcome to this impromptu early Monday morning video. Um, hopefully by the time you guys see this on the channel, it won't be too late. Um, and Monday Night Raw will still be a ways away. But I wanted to let you guys in on further details that we have learned coming out of this whole wild WWE superstar stranded in Saudi Arabia story. Because... Every time I do some more research on this, the story gets more wilder by the moment, by the story. Now, we all know by now, unless you've been living underneath the rock for the past couple of days, that the WWE superstars were stranded over in Saudi Arabia. The report, the initial report by WWE themselves, was that there was multiple mechanical issues or multiple issues with this plane. Now, that was the first red flag for the Amplified Man because I thought, okay, a plane having one issue is bad enough, but you very rarely hear about a, a, an aircraft of that magnitude having multiple issues or at least multiple issues surrounding why 175 personnel can't make it from point A to point B. So that was the first red, red flag for the Amplified Man. I had to start diving into this. And the more I dove into it, the more this story just didn't add up. I'm not one into conspiracy theories. I'm the last person to follow conspiracy theories. But when there's enough facts to back up a notion that at least should be attended to with our attention, then I'm going to do such. And this just seems like one of those scenarios where something isn't adding up. I'm not fully behind this plain malfunction scenario. There is a story going around the pro wrestling world, and I'm talking about within those locker rooms, guys. I am going to tell you about it, but I will forewarn you, I cannot confirm this at all. This is a story going around right now, though, and it seems to have validity to it. That's all I will say. The story goes as such. Apparently, Vince McMahon was owed a lot of money, as in hundreds of millions of dollars from the past two shows, and leading into the third... So Vince ordered the signal to be cut from the broadcast in Saudi Arabia. Once the signal was cut, the Prince of Saudi, when the event was done, ordered everyone off the plane and informed the pilot he wasn't going anywhere. Now, of course, Brock Lesnar, Hulk Hogan, Tyson Fury, Vince McMahon, and what is being deemed the top 20, meaning Vince McMahon's top 20 superstars, they all were able to make it out on private jets and flee Saudi Arabia before everyone else, the, the common folk, if you will, got grounded and stranded there in Saudi Arabia. That's the story we are hearing. Vince was owed a lot of money. Uh, he played games with the Saudi feed and the prince got upset and most superstars were just not able to leave. Now, this is obviously a story that needs to be... Research, right? We need to fact check this. So in my research, I was able to come across a pretty significant conversation between reporter David Bixon and a gentleman from Saudi Arabia who caught the event on their feed. Now, this gentleman had the exchange with David Bixon in response to the story that Bixon has, had posted. The gentleman said, and I quote, this was over on Twitter, huh? The signal was not cut. It was on a tape delay, though. So Bixon responded, so it wasn't live in the first place? The Saudi guy responded, nope, it was on a one-hour tape delay. NBC Action tweeted stuff as the show was going on. Bixon then asked this gentleman, wait, was Crown Jewel always on a one-hour tape delay? Or was there a late change? How did the previous three shows air? The Saudi guy responded, previous shows were always live. This was the first time it was delayed. And don't think it was mentioned beforehand. Bixon then asked the guy to check any guides that he can come across and see if it was supposed to be live. The guy responded, yes, it was supposed to be live. Odd. That was his quote. 
So if this thing was supposed to be live up front and there was a delay, then this would back up the story that we're hearing that Vince cut the feed. We originally thought when this story broke that it was at the end of the event. But Vince looks like he didn't put the feed out there from the jump. And evidently it was like a a hostage situation with McMahon, kind of like what Warrior did to McMahon and probably so many other superstars since. But Warrior did it back in the early 90s on SummerSlam. Before Warrior went out to the ring, he told Vince McMahon, I want X amount of money and these dates off or I'm not going to the ring. So Vince probably said, I want my money, X amount, or this feed isn't going out to your country. It's possible. This conversation with Bixen and this Saudi gentleman does back up the fact that why was the feed tainted over in Saudi Arabia? Why was that delayed when the other shows, apparently from this guy anyway, were live? So again, this, this just, obviously guys, we do our research on it, but this just screams something more was the cause of these superstars being held back. And then you go into, and the superstars themselves know something, right? Or they're hearing rumblings, you would think. Well, Carl Anderson himself went on Twitter once he was home and he said, you couldn't pay me enough to go back. Well, that's not true. I need a second pool. So so he kind of made a little bit of fun. But Anderson's wife, Christina, chimed in. So Carl Anderson's wife responded and said, second house, not just a second pool, but don't ever go back again. Capital letters. Don't ever go back again. Again, this is Carl Anderson's wife. She says, we don't need our daddy and mother lover being held hostage while we're at home worried to death. She actually used the word hostage. She said, we don't need our daddy being held. So they're hearing something too, right? You you think she just used that word? Possibly. But when you add all of this, these facts up or to be deemed facts, stories right now, let me clarify. But the things that we are hearing when you add them up, You have to wonder if they are factual because they all seem to be following suit. And when things start to follow suit, when everything falls in line after the other perfectly, it no longer becomes just the story. There's some validity and fact to it. Remains to be seen. But there's a lot more going on here. And it appears another story is that WWE is trying to have superstars. They're trying to tape them talking about how indeed there was uh, mechanical issues with the plane. And that's what grounded them. But that's odd. Why would you have everybody trying to cement your story? Very weird to me, this whole thing. And uh, we still have to find out a lot more. But I I thought it was kind of important for you guys to know the latest details. And uh, that's what this channel is all about, right? The the latest details, the latest um, facts that we have or information. Because without that, we just have channels. There's too many people in this community with channels that are just full of fucking opinions. And... Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one and they're usually full of shit. I don't like to run this channel on just opinion. I love to have all the facts and information present and then we can come to our conclusions. So I thought this video was very important to get out to you guys. Now, stemming from this, no matter what the facts were behind the the grounding, the stranding of these superstars, they were in fact stranded and they're upset with Vince McMahon and WWE. Regardless of what kept them in Saudi Arabia, these superstars are upset, they're unhappy. And I told you guys, I made a video in yesterday's podcast, and I told you just some of the superstars that are voicing their frustrations, like Curtis Axel, who wrote on Twitter, not the top 20, question mark? Remember, you, I just told you guys, the top 20 was Vince McMahon's hand-picked superstars that got the leave on those private jets. So Curtis Axel wrote, not top 20, middle finger emoji. I'm number one at home. We don't leave each other behind at WWE. And he actually added WWE. 
that whole company. So that was awesome by Curtis A. Axel for standing up for himself, man, and for all of his superstars. He literally put, we don't leave each other behind. Luke Harper over on uh, Instagram put, Larry, I'm home, meaning his dog. I guess I didn't want it enough to pay for my own charter, but I'm home now. Hashtag not top 20. Tyson Kidd, next time we'll pool our money together instead of being lazy. And, and that's in response to WWE's direct comment publicly. WWE sent out a post saying that some superstars felt so passionately about showing up to SmackDown that they got their own, their own ways and means home. Meaning Vince McMahon's hand-picked people, but that's not fair. Because they were picked by Vince. So how can you now publicly send out a statement saying the superstars that made it home, those were the passionate ones that wanted it and tried to be there for SmackDown. But the other superstars didn't want it bad enough. They didn't want to go home to their families. They didn't want to go and perform at SmackDown. So they took great exception to that. And that's why Tyson Kidd said, we'll pool our money together next time instead of being lazy. Basically saying, yeah, next time maybe we'll want it bad enough. Eric Young, he put, I'll pitch in, guys. Next time I'll have more pride in myself and take it upon myself to be better. What a world. What a fucking universe. He actually put those words, as in WWE universe. Scott Dawson just put hashtag poor. And I told you guys, AEW world champion Chris Jericho even had some fun and said, shame on you lazy embarrassments to the company. But he also put um, in a much more... You know, matter of fact, tone, obviously. Glad everybody made it home safely. So Jericho started off in a funny way, but he, he turned more serious and said everyone's, uh, you know, we're glad that they're home. And we are, man. That's that's the most important thing here. Everybody made it home uh, safe and good. And that's what definitely matters. But just uh, on these aforementioned, these are just the individuals that I was able to put down on record before I put up that podcast yesterday. Who knows how many more superstars came out and voiced their frustrations, but people are pissed off. Carl Anderson, by the way, I, I said a little um, response that he had about this, never going back and his wife chiming in and talking about the whole hostage situation. Carl Anderson also said, and this is most interesting, he said, looking forward to seeing who the locker room leader is on Monday. And he put the emoji of popcorn in a heart. So this leads me to believe that while those superstars were stranded over there in Saudi Arabia, they were pissed off at not just Vince, but those top 20, the so-called locker room leaders like Roman and Seth Rollins, who in the past, especially Rollins, they've shit on their own peers in that locker room, locker room for stepping up and standing up for themselves. When they were unhappy or they thought Vince McMahon was not treating them fairly or wasn't giving them a chance and pushing them, Seth Rollins said, you're to blame because you're not trying hard enough. It's not Vince. It's not the company. But if you're a locker room leader, aren't you showing support for your locker room? Aren't you standing up against your boss and saying, hey, we need this. We deserve this. We feel this way and that way. No, Seth Rollins just played corporate ass kisser. And now it sounds to me like Anderson and everybody got together and said, we're fucking done with this. Fuck Vince, fuck your top 20. We're the backbone of this company. That's what it sounds like. Could be storyline. NXT we know, or at least we feel, they're coming tonight. NXT is going to invade tonight. So uh, is, is Monday Night Raw going to be prepared? Who's the locker room leader going to be storyline-wise? Maybe the club is going to show up and show out. Could be. We can't really decipher right now, but this fell in line. I want to tell you guys that this comment was in between his frustration with the Saudi Arabia thing. So this leads me to believe that this is not storyline. Bailey actually went out and Bailey said in response to a post put up by WWE regarding Triple H. Bailey said he'll turn his back on every single one of you too someday, meaning the NXT superstars. Anderson just kind of chimed in and put truth. That was it. Just put truth. So again, we can't really decipher. Is that storyline or is this really Anderson still continuing being kind of upset with everybody else? 
Who knows, man? I know that was a lot of info to take on uh, on this early Monday. By the time you guys see this, it might be early afternoon. So maybe you've already had your coffee and you can digest all of this information. But there's a lot of info, guys, because there's a lot that just isn't adding up. And, you know, for the sheep out there, that's fine. Uh, it doesn't matter. They're home and that's all that matters. And in, in, in a big way, that is true. But there's some of us in the world that want to get to the bottom of shit. Like, something's not adding up. Vincent Kennedy McMahon is not telling the whole truth. And, and when it's all said and done, no, if we never get to the fucking bottom of it, or if it was just mechanical issues, the bottom line at the end of the day is this dude stranded his superstars. BC, what do you expect him to do, man? He's the boss. He's going to charter himself out, obviously. And they made arrangements and they were able to get him home. Guys, your superstars should never be in this type of fucking scenario. And if you're a true leader, not just locker room leader like Rollins or Roman or fucking anyone like that, but if you're the boss, you make sure every one of those men are out before you take off. That's how I was raised. If I'm leading a coalition or any entity, my troops are out first and then the big dog's taken off. No, not Roman. The amplified man as the leader. I will be the fucking last one. I'm going to make sure my shit is good. Where I come from and how I grew up is you lead by example. Time and time again, we see Vince McMahon throw his superstars under the bus. And time and time again, they take that shit because they feel if I speak up, I'm going to lose my job. I am so glad that more and more superstars are starting to speak up. In fact, they're starting to walk the fuck out. Or nowadays, they're letting their contract expire and they're going to those other three letters in the wrestling business. I'm glad that there's options. I'm glad that people are voicing up and voicing out. Because this is absolute bullshit when you hear people getting stranded like that. And there's no clear indication of what was the cause you better tell us the exact mechanical issues. We better hear from the fucking pilot. And we better hear the truth from the people that know what the fuck the deal is. Because no, this should never happen to these professional athletes. Yes, athletes. Getting stranded like that. And even the wrestlers are questioning, what the fuck was all this about? Their wives, their wives, scared shitless because their fucking, their husbands might be held hostage. Weird shit. We'll find out more. The Amplified Man tonight, of course, WWE Monday Night Raw. Aside from the normal boring shit that is Monday Night Raw, there is a big chance NXT could storm in. To Monday Night Raw. I believe they're in where? Fucking. Um, I believe they're Long Island. And I was actually gonna. I was actually gonna go through some things actually arose. And kind of took me out of that. Unfortunately. But I had some good damn tickets. <laughs> um, or at least they were mine if I wanted them. And, and I almost was able to go. But some things came up. But you know, if NXT does show up, I don't expect it to be as good as what happened on SmackDown. I think that was lightning in a bottle. That was uh, once in a blue moon. Uh, that was all the stars aligning together. That was magic on SmackDown this past Friday night. I don't expect it to be that good, but it could be much better than the Raws we've seen in recent memory if NXT does indeed show up. Um, so we'll wait for that. And of course, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the review and reaction of Monday Night Raw for now. Be amplified, man. Get your coffee. Gow! Get amplified and whoop today's ass. We'll check you later.